Hello guys, we are once again back today. Um, we are going to look at yet another constitution in 1951. But before then, I urge you to subscribe to the channel and also um, recommend it to your friends. Share and let us help to promote the learning of history uh, among our um, peers and children. In our previous video, we looked at the 1946 constitution, the Alambans constitution, which we saw quite a uh, great, a profound uh, improvement in that constitution uh, with regards to both the executive council and the membership of also the Legislative Council, where we saw now Ghanaians or Africans for the first time, or the Gold Coasters for the first time, had majority of uh, their members or people in the Legislative Council. We also saw, of course, for the first time, Ghanaians being trail Ghanaians or Gold Coasters who were also actually appointed onto the Executive Council for the first time. Now, before we begin with the with the with the with the constitution that we are going to do today um, let me remind you that at this period from 1945 onwards up to 1951 1956 that the gold coast actually um, had independence the 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 the, the, the i mean the mindset of the africans or the nationalists or the educated elite as i have said earlier had changed now, their nationalism was more of a radical one instead of the proto nationalists that, uh, you know, came just after the First World War that actual Africans were demanding for uh, certain reforms and changes to be made in the uh, colonial administration. But after the Second World War, 1945 onwards, this trajectory changed. Now Africans were now demanding for more and greater participation, even uh, asking for independence to the extent of asking for what independence. So, because of the changes that the World War had brought, this was of course what was happening in the in the in in, in almost all the colonies in Africa um, at that time. And so, all the constitution you see, you realize that the Ban's constitution was actually. Uh, involved much of the Africans, unlike the previous constitutions that we have looked at. And today we are also going to look at yet another constitution which also really included a lot of Africans mm -hmm. in there because now, as I've said, it is a radical nationalism, a militant one, and therefore the African nationalists were so much uh, um, 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 involved in, 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 in achieving um, independence for the uh, people and so of course that's what we're going to look at so we're going to look at the Kosi or the Kusi constitution of 1951 and this is of course one of also the of course one of the best of course colonial constitutions that were also pro uh, also promulgated by the colonial administration called the Kosi constitution or the Kusi constitution and it was promulgated in 1951 so let's look at our objectives let's look at our objectives so our lesson objectives for today will be that as we do always we look at the features of the course constitution of 1951 then we will also look at the strength the merit of the constitution and then we also look at some of the limitations uh, or the weaknesses of the course constitution and even today uh, the 92 constitution that we are still using today also do have their weaknesses which um, we shall look at of course later on so every constitution has its own weaknesses and what yeah. strength so let's just start with the introduction so that we get ourselves introduced to who these people were now the band's constitution as we have said earlier in 1946 failed or had failed to meet the changes that were brought up by the Second World War, because after the Second World War, the Gold Coasters or the Nationalists were demanding for self-determination, total abolished of uh, 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 colonial 
rule. They just wanted to take governance into their hands. And we saw in the Ban's constitution that that was not so. The Ban's constitution did not provide political independence for the Africans. And therefore, uh, it had failed. And so, in order to satisfy the people or the Gold Coasters, Sir, uh, Sir, uh, the governor or the then governor, Sir Gerard Greasy, uh, set up a 39 all Ghanaian member committee under the chairmanship of Sir Henry Kosi, a prominent Ghanaian judge, to draw up a new constitution that gives the people a real say in the government and also to make the recommendations of the Washington Commission on the 1948 uh, route acceptable to the people of the Gold Coast. So, Sir. Uh, Henry uh, Greasy, uh, I'm sorry, Sir uh, Henry uh, Kusi is, is 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 the one you see in your in your shot in your shot yeah, Sir Henry of course of course Greasy is the one you see in your shot yeah. and he actually um, no I think it is uh, Greasy Rada it is Greasy Rada it is Sir Gerard Greasy Rada whom you see in your shot here. Yeah. And because the Western Commission, as we have already said, was actually asking for a greater participation, okay, in the in the constitution or asking for self determination, and and it had failed. Of course, Sir Gerard Greasy, you know, decided to 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 to, to set up a member, a thirty nine, of course, member committee in order to to do this. Now, hence, it is referred to as the Corsi Constitution. So the reason why sometimes uh, we call this 1951 Constitution the Corsi Constitution was because it was Sir Henley, of course, Corsi, who actually chaired uh, a committee to draft that constitution. Now, the recommendations of this committee formed the basis of the 1951 Constitution. The constitution was again named after Governor Edin Clark, who took over from the governor, Sir Gerard Greasy. So those are the two governors or the pictures you see here. This is Sir Gerard uh, Greasy, and then the, this man the down here, uh, the one in white, is called Sir Gerard Edin Clark. So it was actually Sir Gerard Edin, um, Sir uh, Governor Edin Clark, who actually uh, saw the introduction or the promulgation of the 1951 constitution and so um, sometimes it is named after Edin Clark of course uh, and then sometimes too it is named after the chairman who led the 39 member Ghanaian committee to set up a constitution so it is very we are curious now that Ghanaian's 39 member Ghanaian committee have been set and uh, with the chairman of course being an European we are curious as to how the executive council and co are going to 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 to, to be or the composition so let's look at the composition of the committee first before we look at the the features of the 1951 constitution and so we are saying that the committee was made up of chiefs um, uh, chiefs ministers of religion and these are the pastors uh, businessmen members of the upper elite and of in intellectuals lawyers and among whom all the six leaders of the then UGCC, the United Good Coast Convention, all the six of core leaders were also included in the 39 member, with the exception of um, Kwame Nkrumah, who at this time uh, was considered as a radical leader. And so, in the 1951 constitution, Nkrumah actually was not added to the 39 member committee that were set up to draft a new constitution. However, ironically, it's 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 also quite strange because he was the the most popular among all the people that the 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 British officials had chosen or appointed to draft the constitution. Nkrumah was the most popular among all of them, and all of them were fighting for the same cause: uh, self determination, independence. And so it was quite strange that Nkrumah was actually uh, not invited for or not included in the committee but like as i have already said because of his radical nature the british didn't want that and so they did not include him and this will lead to a situation whereby <laughs> Nkrumah will later in 1956 reject the 1951 constitution when he actually became 
the, the leader of government business, you will then reject this constitution and also uh, uh, introduce or promulgate his own constitution. Um, I mean, for quite you know, uh, I mean, for quite good reasons. We shall look at that later on. But let's look at the the composition of the Executive Council in the 1916 uh, uh, 1951 Constitution. Now there was to be an Executive Council, and that's the Cabinet, and this will be consist of three ex official members, and we also have eight Ghanaian ministers who were supposed to be drawn from the legislative assembly now that the the legislative council was now changed to the legislative assembly so you will have three ex-official members and then eight Ghanaian ministers and it looks like quite we are going to have a majority of Ghanaians or the gold coasters on the executive council let's continue and find out what was there we are saying that the executive council as always was responsible to the governor as well as the assembly now one out of the eight Ghanaian members was to be the leader of government business and later that position or portfolio was changed to the prime minister and approved by the assembly so what we are saying here is that out of the eight Ghanaian ministers one of them will be appointed or would be chosen as the leader of government business and this obviously was Kwame Nkrumah or became Kwame Nkrumah later after the election was held in 19 51 he actually won and became the the leader of government businesses and so this is the the composition of the executive council and it looks quite good because there is a greater Ghanaian participation i think Ghanaians are even the majority or africans are even the majority on the executive council and that was one of the main aspirations of the of the nationalists of the educated elite and so in a way we can see that the Adin Clark constitution or the Kosi constitution in a way you know addressed uh, some of the the challenges that came up after the second world war now let's look at that of the legislative council or the legislative assembly which we now call the legislative council was to have a chairman and also 84 members distributed as follows so out of the a chairman and then 84 members so the legislative council including the chairman would have 85 what members fantastic and these 85 members are distributed in this way three sorry three of these 84 members are going to be ex-official members who are going to be white which means that we are going to have a white minority on the uh, legislative assembly in the in, in the legislative assembly and six who were also to represent mining commercial interests defense external finance and justice and all these were european so we have uh, so we can have about nine of uh, europeans out of the 84 because let's look at the people 37 were also chosen by the chiefs so look at 37 of these members were also going to be chosen by the chiefs and 38 to be elected directly by the municipalities of Accra, Kumasi, Sekandi and, and, and Takrade. So still we have a situation whereby the Africans or the, no, sorry not the Africans, the British colonial administration is still interested in the chiefs here we we see in this constitution a large a number of representation has also been given to the chiefs and this you should know the reason because of the indirect rule system and so you realize that the british you know have never favored or they had never favored the educated elite not at all the 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 they have had their own way of doing things so that is that as we have seen over there good but it's it's quite interesting that after this whole thing you realize that in chroma in 1951 who would come of course he himself was an educated elite and so he would come and take away all the all the seats of the of the chiefs and that uh, brought some sort of 
uh, enmity between Nkrumah and the and the chiefs later on in 1956. But since we already know, for the British, they favored the chiefs so much. I don't know, of course, what you also think that you think that it was the chiefs who should have more representation, or you also I mean side with Nkrumah of course for the fact that maybe more educated elite instead of the chiefs. Let's look at the merits, and the merits are obvious. This, uh, of course, constitution was significant because it was the first constitution that granted internal self-government to the people. Internal self-government in the sense that we had a leader of government business who was later uh, changed to be a prime minister. Okay, So internally, we were ruling ourselves. Internal issues were addressed by ourselves. Policies, internal policies were all addressed by ourselves. But when it comes to international front, our relations with other neighboring countries, we had the queen. We still had the queen who was uh, our head. And then we had Nkrumah who was supposed to be our um, prime minister. So internally, we had that self I mean, government. The constitution afforded the Ghanaians the opportunity to be majority on the executive council, and for the first time, the executive council was responsible to both the governor and the legislative assembly. So, as I have already told you, Ghanaians had the majority on the executive council. As we saw in 1946, Ghanaians did not have a majority because it was only three that were appointed. But here, we have seen that Ghanaians to have the majority in the executive council and this is what the Africans have been or the Ghanaians have been looking for. Again, the constitution again changed the Ghanaian, uh, charged the Ghanaian ministers on the executive council with the responsibility to formulate and implement of course policies. Now the constitution also enlarged the membership of the legislative um, council from 31 under 1946 to a whooping 84 members, which was quite also uh, good because this was done to satisfy the people. Because like I, like I have already stated, at this period, the, the educated elite were demanding for total independence, self-determination. So if they give them 84, it's not, it's not by chance. It is something that they, the nationalists actually had fought for. And it also increased the seats for direct election from 5 in 1946 to 38. Don't also forget that the chiefs taking uh, the chiefs appointing 37, the educated elite, um, people who were also allowed to be voted for, and, and some of these would be educated elite, and some of them were also chiefs, were also what 38. Unlike 1946, whereby only five people were allowed to, to vote, two were uh, to represent, I think, Accra, and then one in Takrade, one in, in Sekendi and Co. But here, we are going to have 38 being elected for. And this is a very, very good news. So, it's a very, very good news. Good. Let's move on to the, the, I mean, I mean the weaknesses of this constitution. The Executive Council still presided over by the governor uh, therefore he could veto or any of course legislation from the council so yes even though we say that one of the ministers i mean is is going to be a leader of government business and later prime minister if the queen if the governor uh, decides not to agree to certain things there is nothing that the the good coasters could do you understand and the governor also could dismiss any minister the governor here, of course, could also dismiss any minister. So the governor was acting as a president, okay? And the minister and the prime minister or the, or the leader of government business was there. And this British governor could actually dismiss any of the, of the ministers who were part of the executive. And that is also quite, you know, undemocratic. The governor could forcefully also pass any bill into law. Uh, in the event that the Legislative Assembly refuses to pass it. By implication, the Constitution allowed the Governor to retain his extraordinary power of the veto of, the, of that veto. You see, 
the British, yes, they have given us that that freedom, that uh, participation, that African participation that we have been looking at. Uh, that, 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 of course, right to vote uh, principle, the elective principle that uh, Ghanaians have been looking at. But really, or really, if you look or if you study critically this constitution, you see, you see that <laughs> power is still in their hands. You understand? The, 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 the governor still have the power. He can sack the ministers, he can veto things, he can pass bills into laws when, of course, he deemed right, and which <laughs> is not so. So it's like, yes, we have given you that self internal government, but really, you are not, you are not free. You are still under the colony, and, 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 and that is when the republic comes in. We are still not a republic. We are not on our own. You understand, the, the Ghanaians were not on their own. So like, for instance, today, the, uh, the ill everything that is now, uh, you know, of course, you know, you know, causing much uh, chaos in parliament. If Parliament or if the Legislative Assembly decides not to pass such a, a, a bill, then <laughs> the Governor then decides to pass it, then it is done. It then means that the, uh, the Assembly, the, the, the Legislative Assembly was just a mere uh, a show, show of nothing. They, were, they didn't really have much power as, you know, they do have today. Good. Now, the ex-official members appointed by the governor also control the key areas of defense, external affairs, finance, and justice. So, yes, the, 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 the members, ex-official members that were appointed by the governor also, also, of course, control the key areas, which <laughs> is also a problem because uh, it means that you are just... The, the, the Ghanaians who were elected and all of that were just, were just a mere show. They were you know, like really not doing much. The governor also retained the power to also dissolve the legislative assembly, dissolve the whole entire assembly, uh, people that have been appointed. Gosh, that, is, that was also not a good thing to be done. So good. With this thing, I think that uh, we are done. And thank you very much for your time. We shall meet some other time. Bye-bye.